Hey everybody, welcome to Ellis Mowers. I appreciate y'all watching as always. You'll hear me say it in my future videos. I do have a website now. You can find all my contact information for social media and email on my website, ellismowers.com. Also, I got some links in the description below uh, to Instagram and Facebook and my email and all that good stuff. So, let's get on with what we're going to do today. We've got a Monster Energy uh, riding lawnmower here. Not really. It's a uh, Murray. Uh, somebody decided to paint black and put Monster Energy logos on. Um, looks like a lot of the work has been done for me already. This mower I did get for free, so I am very excited about that. Um, the person I got it from got a Troy built and they put a deck on it and it was her mom's mower and I think they had done enough and just said, just take this from us please. So I took it from them and uh, we're going to see what we can do with it. I do know that at this point in time it is running, no I'm sorry I'm looking at the mower that's doing it. I know that it's running very hot apparently, like uh, making the muffler glow really really red. So. Um, I don't know if there's something going on internally. It probably is just going to be a valve adjustment. But I'll go ahead and give you a walk around and tour of this mower and uh, we'll see what we can do with it here. Alright, so I haven't done any sort of washing or anything to this. It's a Murray. I'll have to measure the blades. I do not know if this is a 40 inch or a 42 inch deck it is a for a murray since briggs bought them this is somewhat of a newer model um i'll have to do a, was it four two five zero zero seven x nine two it doesn't say the size i would guess that it may be a 42 inch kind of looks like it now the engine here is a two eight H or 283H07 made in 2003. So this is one of the early, I call them the second gen overhead valve engines. The first gen is the one that has the more square cover to them. Um, like I said, running hot. Muffler glowing red hot for some reason. And they said something sounded like something was something let go in it or something. I'm not quite sure, but uh, we're gonna see what we got here. There is no gas in it. I don't know if that means that the fuel tank's leaking or if we've just got no gas. I mean, the tank's clean. Smells okay. Air filter's relatively clean, but it's also the, um, the fabric type, and I really do not like the fabric type. It seems like it gives the engine a lot of restriction when it comes to air. So that may be have a factor into why it's running so hot and we'll see if we can get it to run hot in a second. I'll probably replace that line right there. This solenoid switch is getting a little bit tired. It probably is bypassed honestly. Um, it's got a Nikki carburetor on it. So I believe yeah, because the wall burrows have the small, small switch there. Blades, one, I've noticed that the right blade over here is on upside down. So I had to switch the blades over. Belt seem like it's in decent shape. A little bit of ATF in the front tires is going to fix it, fix that. It's got the six-speed transmission in it. Um... So, I had the battery charging. I'll see if the battery is going to stay charged on it. Um, if not, I'll swap a battery in it. I'll put some gas in it. And quite honestly, I mean, the oil is a little on the low side. But it's uh, acceptable enough for me to at least to try and start it. And there's no gas in it. So, that's a good thing, too. Looks okay otherwise. We'll see, we'll see what we got. Let me put a battery in it. Let's see if we can get it started up here. All right, y'all, so I put a battery in it. The battery that came in it charged right up after about a day on the charger. Um, I, I mean, everything looks like it's okay. 
So I'm just gonna see if it'll crank up. Hopefully it will. I know it ain't been running a few months, but. It's got really low compression, which leads me to believe that it may be a valve adjustment. We'll see. Let me get a jack and get a couple of 10 mils and just take the valve cover off and see what we got going under there. Slow to turn over. Um, still will turn over, but really, really think needs a valve adjustment as long as one of the uh, push rods hasn't come out because if I know it ran hot it may it may have done something so we'll see all right y'all got the tools the reason why I jack it up is so that the oil doesn't continue to dump out whenever you do this Let's see what we got under here. Yep, that's what I thought. That is exactly what I thought, actually. How about that? It, uh, it ate the intake push rod. If you can see that right there. So that's gone. And the head is. Uh, it's going to be fun getting the head off with that exhaust on here, but we'll try. So the exhaust push rod or the intake push rod is gone. You see that back there, right? So I just essentially need to take the head off and get a push rod, which, uh, there's one. So, probably run again. Honestly, I probably the valves were so far out of adjustment it was running lean and then it ran hot and blew the push rod out. I'm not completely sure, but that would be my theory. So next step, I need to get the cover off engine cover which is just four bolts right there right there right there right there and uh, get the exhaust off which is just some star bits need to get this this exhaust off right here and then just take the intake those two 10 millimeter intakes off and we'll be good so let me grab the necessary tools I'll go ahead and get started on it all right, y'all, one of the things I could really use is a dedicated star bit set, and I should buy myself one, but I was able to take a quarter-inch ratchet, a quarter-inch drive ratchet, a quarter-inch socket, and then um, one of these star bits and just put it on the end of that, and I'm able to get this off. This was just two 13 millimeters. That was easy. So now I'm just taking the rest of this off here. There's a couple of hard spots that I gotta get through. Because it's exhaust bolts. I'm just thankful that it didn't break off. Like I said, this mower seemed like it was decently cared for. So set up side. The, uh, the exhaust is held on by a bolt right there that's behind the head, so I'm not worried about that. We'll take this 
plug boot off. There we go. They had put a new plug in it and had done a lot of the service items already on it. So, next order of business, we'll come over on the intake side. All I've got to do here is disconnect these two. bolts for the intake. Don't have to take much off here just to get the head off. Okay, so that's off. The intake is, should be just boom. That's all we need to do. Now the next order of business, it'll make our lives a lot easier. I just gotta take this engine cover off. Again, I don't have a star bit that'll fit, but I have a screwdriver that will. Take plan B approach and just use some pliers. And those shouldn't be on that tightly. And these, these I don't have to take all the way off in order to get off, which is nice. Take these off. Ugh. Got a flathead screwdriver that'll work for this somewhere. I have a star bit, but I broke like two or three of the bits, so using kind of the ghetto method of removing these, but it works. back side I just take my 3 8 inch ratchet sockets clean it up as it go here and there's just two bolts in the back we're going to take off Again, these you don't have to take off all the way. Some others you do. Caught y'all on, but saved ya. And here's the other side. clean on the inside too. Start is in decent shape. I think a lot of the dragging was from the deck belt. Seems like it was rubbing a little bit. Let me grab my big boy impact and we'll go ahead and take the uh, take this off while we're here. The head. Easy, easy, easy to do. Oh, 
all the tools straight over like I always do. Sixteens are halves. They're halves. Smaller impact would probably get them off, but ooh. probably will need to use a smaller impact to get away from the. Now we got it. take the plug out of that one. Seven. And last but not least is the one where the plug is. Let's see if we can get this out by hand here. We can, okay. That should allow us to just pull this head right off. Hmm. Oh. I got them all right. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, this one. There we go. Take it easy. Yeah. She just let go, y'all. Looks real good otherwise, though. Like we mentioned, the mower was running hot. Look like the head gas that looks like it's new. Just broke that rod right in half. So, I got a steel push rod lying around here. We're gonna put a steel one in there. Which be kind of nice. this one is just put it down like this too. So we need to get that push rod right back to that little black hole right there. Maybe I'll just put the maybe I'll put the head back on. Put a bolt or two back on in the head here. Oh, I'm missing a um, cap too, so the cap probably fell down somewhere. Let's see if I can find the cap for this. If not, I've got one lying around somewhere. I'll just pick it off. I just put a couple of these in, thread them in a little bit. And Not terribly tight. There's the cap that we're missing. Put it back on. Now we'll feed the rods through there. And you'll feel them kind of recess into a groove. Whenever you get them right. right there, that'll kind of be right on the money. So now what I'm going to do, huh, got two different valve caps on it, that's kind of weird. Which means that somebody's been in here. So, let me grab the let me grab the tools I need so I'm not wasting too much time. We'll go ahead and do the valve adjustment and everything while we're sitting right here. I'll go ahead and put these bolts in and torque them down. I think they're like 18 foot pounds. I've double checked and I'll give you a confirmation 
and uh, we'll you know do the thing that we need to do here and see what we got all right y'all I don't know if the prognosis is good on this um, reason at, reason saying is I've got the valve back on and check out so we got the intake on the bottom intakes working great but check out the exhaust the exhaust valve So the intake moved that far if you can see the exhaust look how little it's moving as opposed to the intake so that makes me think that this thing's got a bad camshaft Woo! so uh, I think we're gonna be going into this one to replace the camshaft unfortunately <laughs> uh, that really stinks Cause that's it's hardly moving at all and it's supposed to like it's supposed to move just as much as the um exo or the intake valve and so that would explain why it maybe but it, it'd probably be running hot is because it's it's uh the exhaust temperatures are getting so hot because the exhaust gases can't get out of the engine due to a worn camshaft loop so, what do I do in this case? Pulling this apart ain't too bad, I don't think. Um, I'm just dying because I've got so much lawn equipment at my house right now. And I don't know if I want to tackle on something like this. It's not terrible, but like. It's like, do I just swap an engine out? I've got one on that LT4000 there. That's good. Order a camshaft. I also have a blown up 16 horsepower, 16 and a half horsepower Briggs right here. I don't know if the camshaft's good on it. I might see if it is. If so, I might pull it out and see what we can do with it I'm well, I'm not completely sure at this point um, there's a lot of little things I want to try and get done here so I might put this on the back burner for right now maybe order a camshaft maybe I'll just take the camshaft out of this and if this is good the next afternoon I have some time I'm gonna just throw it in there Then again, I know that I could do a swap, an engine swap, real quick today and essentially be done with it, but I don't know if I want to do that. Let me check under the mower and see how involved it's going to be. Honestly, I don't think it's going to be very involved. Because what I could do is just give them the big old swaparoo for right now. Having one good working lawnmower, the other one I don't have a I don't have a, a deck for. And so I'm kind of trying to figure out what I might want to do with it if I want to do anything at all. Because it's got like I said, it's got good transmission and stuff in it. Decisions, decisions. Let me think on it for a minute. Might fix a push more while I'm at it. I don't know. All right, guys. This is the engine that I got off of a Poland XT that ended up blowing up. Ended up cracking the base plate down here. So I don't know what happened to it, but I just want to see if this camshaft is good or not. I also kind of want to see why this thing blew up. Let's see.
camshaft. Oh. Did the governor come out of it? So the governor's over here. Oh, yeah, it broke the uh, counterbalance back here, right there. Right there in the back. Broke that. Camshaft. Compression release is gone, so. We will not be using this camshaft, as you can see. So, this engine's pretty much junk. A little bit of wear around the wrist pin. Piston is blown out of it too, so that's too bad. Got a good governor out of it though, I think. Do we? No, we're missing missing the missing something from the governor. So got a bunch of trash here, honestly. I know it needs a camshaft. The, th the lobes are worn on it. Just kind of like this one right here had a worn lobe. I am almost certain that that's what's going on with that one. Given the description of what's going on either way I've got to take an engine off do I just swap it from this craftsman over to the Murray that way I have a good ride mower I can just sell off real quick and then I can just use a that engine for another purpose when the time comes And honestly, do I feel like getting into this mess today, you know? Decisions, decisions! Uh, tell you what, I'm gonna drain the oil out, take the engine, either way I gotta take the engine base plate off. And I might just order a camshaft for the thing. I get, I'm not sure, y'all. <laughs> I am, uh... I'm on the fence about what type of work I want to get into today. Let me figure it out. I'll be right back. Alright, since I'm going to have to do it anyways, whatever engine I put it, or whatever mower I put this on, I'm going to go ahead and order a camshaft for this. Um... And uh, just do it and keep this engine on here. If that's, that's all that's wrong with it, if I've got, you know, $40 and two hours in the mower, you know, I think that's, that's a pretty good deal right there. So that's, what, that's the route that I'm going to go. It's going to take a couple of days for it to come in, but when it comes in, I'll get after it because I really need to get some stuff out of the garage here. But, uh, yeah, so when that comes in, we'll go ahead and continue with this. All right, guys, I've got this thing on the lift. I do need to drain the oil out of it still. I'll just rest the block on. I'll just put it on an oil pan and just drain it out uh, before I start working on this. Um, like I said, got on the lift. We're going to take the uh, take this thing off. I'm going to go ahead and take this... Um, half inch bolt off for the muffler just to get it out of the way and then the only thing else you got to do is take the starter starter nut off 7 16 be careful with that because you don't want to mess up the nut and then mess up the internals of the starter and then you have your coil your kill wire for your coil or actually your excuse me your um, charging wire there and then I got to take a 5 16 Well, we got the uh, solenoid wire here too, which is, I need to do a little bit of work on it, looks like. Um, and then we have a uh, 5 16 to take this off. The carburetor is still hanging there. Um, I could probably take that off and just leave it for right now. 
which I might do while y'all are here with me. So, I just gotta take the linkages off because I've got the, I've got it off of the intake already. So you need to pull the intake pipe here from the, or the breather, put it, oh, they attached it with a hose clamp. There we go. Choke, pulls right out. And then your throttle, we'll just pull it out from the carb here. I'll just put that right on the side over there. We'll just let the carb rest over here too with the fuel line. Ain't even got to worry about taking any of that off. Uh, I'll go ahead and take this throttle off as well. All right. Just to have that laid over there, 5 sixteenths, we'll get that throttle cable off. So we'll go ahead and take that off. These are very finely threaded, so be very, very careful. And taking these off this nut anyways there we go. okay and just pull the throttle cable off so that's gone we'll screw this back in some so it doesn't go anywhere then we'll come on this side do we need to take that off I don't think we do do we Yes, we do. So we need to take this ground off right here, too. For the solenoid wire. And I may, because those wires are a little frayed, I may just eliminate that from the equation on this mower. We'll see. It's not leaking any gas or anything. At least I don't think it is. It even has some gas in it, honestly. I don't even know. Got so many ride mowers around here, I don't know what's what anymore. Alright, I got a little bit of gas in there. That's not a big deal. So, let's see. Take that off and just kind of lay it over here. On the other side, hopefully we get lucky. Make sure your switch is off so that your uh, starter is not energized. Give it a nice little tug when I pulled that off and there goes your starter wire just lay it over to the side as well with all your other hardware the uh, half inch bolt for the muffler get that off See if we can find some proper muffler bolts for this thing. I feel like I've got some around somewhere. All right, muffler's off. We'll set that aside as well. And now all that leaves is the four bolts to get this engine off. We could probably unplug this wiring harness. Probably just leave it on. It ain't gonna hurt anything. Um, so yeah, so it's just four half inch bolts. I can do my best to show you where they're at, but it's pretty tight down there. But you'll see them. One of them is right up in here somewhere. And the other two are over there. I think you can see one. And so that's my next order of business. I'm gonna get those four bolts off. You'll see. Once you get under the mower, you'll see which ones I'm talking about. Or you can feel them too. You can feel them if you get up in there. They may, I think they're 5 8 They're either 5 8 or 9 16 depending on the manufacturer of the mower. And depending on what Briggs felt like in that, on that given day, I guess. I don't know. 
So I'm going to do that next, and then we'll get the thing taken off. I'll change our, um, drain all the oil out of it, and get it on the bench, and see what we got. All right, guys, I'm going to take a different approach trying to get this engine off of the Murray. Um, I got one of the rear bolts out, but I can't really get very good access to the front ones. Um, and then the second rear ones are pretty bad too. Or the second rear one's a little bit tough, tough to access with an impact at least. Got some sort of loud aircraft flying over me here. So there's a pin. I pulled the pin and now I'm taking the deck pin out and then I'm going to drop the front of the deck and probably raise the front of the mower while I do this. Um, just to give myself a little bit better access. So I got I got it kind of hammered. Now I got just gotta find something that I can hammer it further out with. Oh, what that loud aircraft was. I don't live near an airport, so. All right, I'm just hitting it out now. There we go. Probably need to lower the deck all the way. That would help. Come on out. You can do it. Got a little bit of rust on it, I think. Just what's keeping me from getting it off. Well, this is about the easiest way to get it off, I guess. But being a little bit of a bear, that's for sure. That thing does not want to come off. It's like it's, it's like it's stuck or something. There's a little ridge or something in there. Oh. Yeah, there's a ridge on the... So it's got to come out. Aha. Got it. So I had a ridge on that side. That's why I wouldn't go. I had to come out this way. So it was best for me to... I guess it's best for me to, to have pushed it out that way. But that's okay. We got it off. Now... I can drop that, raise the mower itself,
a little bit further in than that. There we go. You want to feel more secure, put some jack stands under it. But now that should give me a little bit better access to getting the bolts off underneath the mower. Let's see, that's not the right impact. I'll open the hood back. All right. Struggle is real. Dang. Loosen. guessing game. sockets up in there. Seriously? It's a very tight fit up there with the socket and the steering column and all that crap. Let me show you what I'm dealing with here. So I don't know how well I'll see that, but I've got it stuck on there and the socket's actually stuck in the little area. Bolt is. So Work it out a little bit as you take it off. Probably just got to find a longer extension for this for the other two. I'm going to go ahead and take those other two off, and then I'll uh, we'll pull it off and uh, drain the wool out of it. All right, guys. So I've got the engine off. The only thing I had to do was take a five-eighths inch bolt out of the pulley. Remember, there's a keyway in that. We'll have to remember that when we put this back on. So now I've got it over here, and we're just going to go to town on it. Actually, so I've already taken out all the half-inch bolts that hold on this sump cover. Um, if you've got one with an oil filter, you, it's easier to take out the three little screws and pop that cover off and pop that little oil filter, oil thing off too. Um, so now just take a, I'm going to take a rubber mallet. I'll, get out of here, I'll get, let y'all get out of my way here. That sounds rude, doesn't it? All right, but I don't want y'all to get hurt when I hit this, so. Just gotta give it a few nice jabs. It'll 
eventually pop off. Oh, it will pop off when I take the last bolt off, that's why. There we go. That helps. At least it should. No more bolts, so I think it should just come on off. There we go. She's a little stubborn. I think we got a little, a little bit of rust on the sump cover there. There we go. It should come off really easily now. Oh, come on. A little bit of rust had to get through. All right, so let's check the situation here. I mean, everything looks good, but yeah, ex this is exactly what I thought happened. I am, it's ex like I said, it's exactly what I thought happened is what happened to this. I'll show you once I get this cam shaft off. So you see the intake lobe down here. I believe that's the intake on the bottom. It is. See it look like this. Look at the exhaust one. It is straight up just a flat circle. So. Good news is I don't have to fetch a compression release. Because that's there already. So there shouldn't be anything crazy in the mower. But what I've got to do now is take all this gasket material off and, uh, you know, put the whole new gasket and everything on it. Just a messy job. It's nothing crazy, but like I said, just a little messy. Let me grab my little razor blades and wire brushes, whatever I decide to use on this thing. And get this all cleaned off. I'll show you the new camshaft before we put it in in relation to this old camshaft. And then, this right here, because it's not allowing exhaust gases to release, would cause the issue that they were talking about, which was that red hot muffler. And then they ended up getting so hot it broke the um, intake push rod, which I already showed y'all. So we'll put all this back together, we'll give it a valve adjustment, throw a little bit of a sealer on the um, valve cover and should be good let me go get the parts i'll be right back all right we're gonna go ahead and put the new camshaft in now and uh first off i've got to put the put these in and they just pop in pretty easily actually very easily next thing you're going to find a you're going to rotate this there's a dot on this cam gear or a crankshaft gear excuse me and we're going to put this camshaft in this is one of those amazon camshafts i looked and found the one that was a little bit better rated and spent a couple bucks more just hopefully to have a better experience they are pretty universal you'll see that this one actually has the oil fill the oil um, a place for the pressure lube oil filter on it as well there's a dot on this and i'm just essentially going to line the two dots up and this thing should slide right down in there line the two dots up i'm one tooth off And boom, there you go. Do not, do not forget to put the governor back on. 
because the last thing you want to do is all of that work right there <laughs> and then find out that you didn't put your governor on right or didn't put your governor back on and you crank the thing up and it just goes everywhere or goes you know racing out of control all you got to do I, i'm going to clean this up a little bit before i put it back on i've got the gasket cleaned up all you got to do on these non-oil pump engines is just slide it back on just tap it very gently slide it on and you're good so i'm going to do that i will get the bolts on but this is how your configuration is supposed to be you put your lifters in this is what they're called put your lifters in i replaced the lifters it comes with the camshaft these cheap sets come with these cheap gaskets and these cheap gaskets usually uh, are a little difficult to put on but I haven't had one leak on me so that's good um, looks like it's gonna go like this just gotta get it lined up in the holes sometimes I put a little bit of uh, RTV or something down just to keep it flat but I think I'll be able to navigate it but get your gasket on line it with your little two pilot holes there and uh, be very gentle make sure that you get all your gasket holes lined up whenever you flatten the gasket and put your sump down and you're good so I'll rejoin y'all whenever I get everything back together I'll tell you the torque specs and all that good stuff. I think the torque specs are like 19 foot-pounds or something like that. They're pretty low. You know, you go back and forth in a pattern um, in order to get that done. And then we'll put the thing back on the mower and, uh, you know, put oil in and all that good stuff. See what we can uh, cut some grass and stuff with it after that. All right, guys, so I did what I told you I was going to do. You just get the eight. Make sure the governor stays on that arm. Slide it slowly down. Make sure that your seal is good around your bolts whenever you, or around your sump, whenever you set it down. You can tap it with a little rubber mallet. And then I got my small 3 8 inch torque wrench out. I torqued them to 20. I think it's like either 15 or 20 depending on the engine an extra five foot pounds is not going to kill it although some people think that it will none of the bolts stripped out at 20 foot pounds and they got locked tight and all that mess on so uh, now the hard part is it's not a hard it's not terribly hard but it's a little tricky now I'll show you here in a second so you see where the shaft is kind of on here where the keyway is so we're talking about kind of right rear basically kind of lined up with the dipstick so if you look on the double stack pulley and i'm going to try and do this without having to change anything on it see these two lines and an arrow that's where the keyway is on these so I'm trying to line it up best I can with it. And what I'm going to do is put the engine down onto it. And I should, I should be able to get it lined up good enough to where I can get it on there. Um, well, I may not be able to see very well, but I'm just going to bring the engine over here and get it on. See if we can line it up and then we'll put that 5 8 bolt back in it and that that'll be the hardest part and then it's just going to be reassembling everything that's the easy part Make 
So I set the engine back on. Now I'm going to look at the double stack pulley under there and see if I can get it lined up like we need. There we go. So we got that back on. The drive belt twisted itself in the process. So I need to twist it back. Uh, uh, let me see if I can get the drive belt untwisted. So, the drive belt twisted itself there, and I don't know why. Twist it back. Well, I don't know what's going on here, y'all. Getting twisted somewhere. All right, I got it. Now I'll slide everything back up. I'm sorry, there's never really no way to show you all this very well, but. So I'm gonna get it on and then we'll put the I'll raise I'll jack the thing up and put the four bounding bolts back on. This is the most difficult difficult part about the job is getting everything lined up belt wise and all that mess. So let me do that and I'll get y'all to the next step here so we're not wasting too much time. Alright y'all, I'm gonna end the part one of the Murray uh deal Murray saga right here. Um Reason being is that I didn't realize how long it was, so I need to split it into part two, and I've still got more to film. Part two, we're going to get it back together, we're going to see if we can get it to run, and then we're going to check everything else on it to see what else we might need to get. So, um, I hope y'all enjoyed this. Um, hope y'all enjoyed the whole process of getting this thing off. Murray, this one's not... well. It's average. Craftsman's are a little bit easier to get the engines on and off of. Um, these are probably second in line, and then a, an MTD mower is probably third, uh, in my opinion, at least. 
But um, again, we got it back off. We've got the camshaft changed. Part two will uh, get everything back together, give it a shot at it running, and see what else we need to do to it. So I appreciate y'all watching as always. Remember, I've got my website, ellismowers.com. That's where you can find all the links to my Instagram, Facebook, email, and YouTube right here. So I appreciate y'all watching. I'll catch you on the next video. See you then.